As you can see here, I'm with a brother from another mother. Does your mom have red hair? She doesn't. My great grandmother allegedly did, but that's just hearsay. So I got JP Sears here, who's, uh, I think we're coming along our third or fourth year anniversary as friends. Mm hmm. Yeah, I think we date back to 2013 ish. Mm hmm. Absolutely. And I had a question for him. That question being, um, what kind of advice would you give someone who is single and not only are they ready to mingle, but they are desperate to mingle mm -hmm. and everywhere they go, they are hoping to find their partner of their life? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's a great question and where my mind goes first on that is the desperation part, you know, desperate to find your partner, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, you know, however attached they're looking to get. The desperation really catches my attention. And I've been there plenty of times in my younger years. You can see my gray hair, so mm -hmm. I'm supposed to act like I'm elderly now. But to me, the desperation means we're coming from a place of need. And I don't think it's inherently wrong to be needy. I think it's very human to be needy. But when we're really coming from a place of, I'll call it unchecked, maybe even blind neediness, needing someone, and I need that person to feel adequate about myself, fulfilled, hence I have this sense of desperation, I think that need for a partner is kind of like what pushes them away. Mm -hmm. It at least pushes away the right ones for you in my experience. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a big difference between I need someone in my life and I roam around like a, a hungry animal you know, looking in trash cans for people, <laughs> just <laughs> desperate. Needing someone versus choosing to have someone in your life. I mean, to me, there's a big difference between I need you versus I can choose you. And I think it is much more heartfelt, much more intimate, much more authentic to be able to choose someone to be in your life. I think it's much more respectful for them. And I think it really means you want them. Like, I, I don't need you. Like, I, I can manage on my own. But because I don't need you, I can be here and choose you. Like I can want you to be in my life rather than just needing you. So I think when we can get to a place of being able to choose someone, that's a great place to be. And I, and I think it helps keep us from drowning in those, you know, just really sometimes desperate waters of hunting around for a partner. Mm. But of course, that's all pretty easy to say, hard to do. I think one of the unanswered questions about this question mm. that we're answering is, how do we get to the place where we can choose someone rather than being acting out from a place of desperate neediness? That's and, a good question that you ask yourself. <laughs> Would you mind asking me that question? Let me, let me ask you, JP, so I feel like I have a little bit more control of the situation. <laughs> <laughs> JP. How would you recommend someone getting to that place of being able to choose a partner rather than needing a partner or being desperate for them? Well, what, a great, what a great question, Timothy. I'm surprised that you would ask such a thing. My take on that is you've got to work on meeting your own needs. You've got to work on filling yourself up. You've got to work on being okay being lonely. You know, there's a big difference between saying, yeah, yeah, I really want you as a partner versus saying, I'm trying to escape my loneliness. And sometimes when we're, when we think we're looking for a partner, what we're really doing is just looking to escape our loneliness. So before we're really ready for the partner, partner of our dreams, partner we're destined to have, or at least your next partner, whether that's a month long relationship or a lifelong relationship, I think we've got to be able to tolerate our own company. We've got to be okay with our own loneliness. Mm -hmm. It's not comfortable, but I think we need to learn how to accept even our loneliness. Otherwise, we get into a relationship when we're potentially just trying to find someone to use them so we can feel better, so we can feel less lonely. 
And that is, it, to me, it's not a heartfelt connection. Yeah. If we tell ourselves, I'm looking for a heartfelt connection, I'm desperate to find one, but we're really looking to just self-medicate our loneliness, there's a reason why we don't find the heartfelt connection. It's because that's not what we're looking for. It's just what we tell ourselves we're looking for. So in other words, when, I th when the miracle of life keeps on serving up singlehood, even though you consciously want couplehood, I think the miracle of life does that because it's exactly what we need. We're not in a place where, we're, where we have the psychological infrastructure to be in a coupleship. All easier said than done. But I'm curious how that sounds to you, my friend. Oh, no, it all makes a lot of sense, for sure. So there may be some of us out there wondering, maybe I'm wondering, JP, well, how do I know if I'm desperate or if I'm ready to be in a relationship? Now, mm -hmm. Is there like a sign or even a few signs that you might just be desperately in need of a partner to escape your loneliness? Well, that's a good question, and I think the best answer is no. Uh, it'd be great if there was a sign, like we, we take our pulse and if it ends in an odd number, like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm ready for a relationship. I think there's the field work of living our life experience. If we've gone months, sometimes years, I know I've gone years in my past really wanting a relationship and really just not finding one. I think that's a way of life reflecting, JP, you weren't ready for a relationship because it had been months and years for me. Uh, but I think the, the single biggest indicator that we are or are not ready, in my opinion, is our ability to be comfortable in our own presence. That's incredibly vague of me to say, mm -hmm. Timothy. That's what Timothy's thinking right now. But what I'd add to that is, if you notice yourself always needing to do something, you know, if you're alone in a room for mm -hmm. more than 30 seconds and you feel the sensation of boredom, boredom, in my opinion, mm -hmm. is a symptom. It's a symptom of anxiety about being in our own presence. So if we have to reach for our phone, turn on the TV, do something to distract ourselves from our own company, I think that's definitely a very accurate indicator that says, no, you're not ready for a relationship with another person because you have yet to be learned how to handle the relationship with one person called yourself. But I think when we're in a place where we can be okay being by ourselves, not need to be by ourselves, that's kind of dysfunction in the opposite direction, but yeah, I can be mm. here and... Uh, I don't need to distract myself from myself. I think that's a, a relative indicator that we would be pretty ready for couplehood. Hmm. So, well, those are some some great insight into to relationships and when you might be ready for it. Um, so, with all that said, if if we want to choose not to not to wait till we're ready to be in a relationship, what would you recommend is the best uh, dating website for for us single people out there? Well, you've been telling me about you've got a profile on Tinder, Grinder, Matchmaker, Plenty of Fish. Um, so you, you were telling me you recommend all those at one time. Is that true? Yeah, that's a <laughs> yeah. So it's a great way to fill some voids. All right, JP. Well, thanks. Uh, thanks for being on today. Absolutely. Thank you, my brother, for having me, and thank you all, you lovely people, for being weird enough to listen to us.